Hello everybody, it is I, Eternal Flame here, and today here I wanted to do a versus battle with Toto for a pretty long while, mainly because I think Shinjuku Toto got a massive power-up and not enough people are actually talking about how big the power-up Toto is getting, so I was thinking, who should I put Toto up against? My first thought was Mahito, but then I was like, oh wait, no, Toto can't hurt Mahito at all, that's not really a fair matchup, you all already know the entire, oh, Mahito, Io Transfiguration thing, and you can't hurt him unless you can see the soul. So I'm like, okay, not Mahito, who would be a better opponent, and then I remembered the first ever serious opponent Toto ever fought, which was Hanami. Hanami being the disaster curse of nature, as well as the first opponent that Yuji and Toto had ever jumped together. And I think that Hanami is a pretty interesting matchup for Toto, mainly because of the fact that we have actually seen them fight already. So in this video, I wanted to go over if it is possible for Toto to beat Hanami alone this time, rather than Toto needing Yuji to beat Hanami like they did originally, and just to see how much Toto has grown. Is Hanami still going to beat Toto solo? Let's see in this video by analyzing their abilities, as well as how they fight, and finally their stats, in order to determine who would win this versus battle. So first, I am going to talk about Hanami, mainly because Hanami is the easier one to talk about, and then we can basically, after we're done talking about Hanami, jump to Toto and like use Hanami as a basis for their scaling, since Hanami and Toto have fought before, so we can use that and then jump to Toto after. So now we're going to go over Hanami, their abilities, and that type of good jazz. Now, in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat when it comes to speed and attacking power, Hanami is just straight up equal to, if not around the same level as Goodwill Toto, as we do see Hanami and Toto clash their fists several times throughout the entire battle, which does imply a relativity in speed as well as a relativity in power. However, by far and away, the most dangerous thing about Hanami is their durability, as Hanami is insanely durable as they were able to take quite a lot of punishment. For example, they were able to take playful cloud hits from Toto, a black flash from Yuji, several black flashes from Yuji, in fact, a total of five of them from Goodwill Yuji. He also ended up taking a piercing blood directly from Kamo previously before that fight had even started as well, as well as taking hits from Divine Dog Totality. All of that and Hanami still hadn't been brought down by the end of the arc. However, it should also be noted that Toto back in Goodwill had enough power to steadily damage Hanami on their own, even without Playful Cloud. Then finally, which is by far and away the most important thing when talking about Hanami, is Hanami's abilities that they have access to. Where Hanami's abilities that they have access to is the ability to launch out wood pellets and wood balls at opponents, they can launch out giant tree branches and giant trees at opponents and make them rise from the ground as well as directly manipulate them, or make them disappear and reappear. They can use them to fly on them as well just by making like a giant stick that is flying in the air that they are standing on top of, as well as make those roots launch out in opponents. At least those are the basic abilities Hanami has access to, however they do have access to even more special abilities than just that. As the two main important abilities Hanami has access to are the Curse Buds as well as the Flower Field. The Curse Buds, whenever they land on an opponent, are able to drain an opponent of Curse Energy, and the longer they are on an opponent, the more and more they grow. However, if an opponent does turn off their Curse Energy, they are able to make them stop growing on them and basically fall off of their body. And then finally, there is the Flower Field ability, which the Flower Field ability is able to take away someone's desire to fight, at least for a few moments, which will open them up to a counterattack from Hanami. And then finally, there's also Hanami's Domain Expansion and Domain Amplification, which Domain Amplification will not be useful for this fight, however, Domain Expansion might be if it wasn't for the fact that we have no idea what Hanami's Domain does. Now, yes, there is a video game that does show what Hanami's Domain might actually be capable of, which is draining the life around them and then firing out a giant beam at the opponent off their sunflower arm, but we never actually see it in the anime, so I'm going to factor that in later into the video and basically make a second scenario around the domain, mainly because going off the manga we have no idea what it does and that game is the only real answer for what it does so far. And the final and most important part about Hanami that I should also mention is the fact that they have these two little wood antennas on their head, these two little wood horns, that are its weak points. If those points get compromised, then Hanami gets massively weakened, as Gojo had displayed, mainly because when he ripped those out of Hanami's head, Hanami was not able to keep up a domain amplification against Gojo's domain for long enough, and it is just straight up shown to weaken Hanami. So if they get compromised, then yeah, it's going to get even worse for Hanami than it already will be. So yeah, that's basically everything about Hanami, and now we're going to move on to Toto, see where Toto scales, as well as how he improved since they had first battled Hanami. Now, as I mentioned in the Hanami scaling section, Toto already in Goodwill had enough power to steadily damage Hanami. And Toto had only gotten stronger since that point. For example, back in the Mahito fight, when Mahito and Yuji had both landed their black flashes, he believed that his brother was leaving him behind. They both had gotten so much stronger than what they were before back in Goodwill, and Toto immediately landed a black flash in, in order to catch up to them, already implying that they are basically much stronger in comparison to what they were before. And even with the power growth that Toto had displayed, he was still the weakest of the three of them there, mainly just playing the support role while Yuji was the stronger of the two of them, and then Mahito was even stronger than that. 
And now, most importantly, in the modern day, he has shown relativity to the current Yuji Itadori that is fighting against Sukuna. Even though I do think he is weaker than that Yuji Itadori, he has shown relativity to that Yuji Itadori. Now, to avoid this turning into a video about how strong Shinjuku Yuji is, I'm just going to link you guys to the video itself. But just know, Toto is massively stronger than what he was in Goodwill, as well as even what he was against Mahito, just to make this pretty easy and simple. So each of his hits are going to be doing a steady amount of damage to Hanami, even more so than what he he was doing originally. And also, Toto is going to have a massive speed advantage in comparison to what he was before because like how he gotten stronger, he had also gotten faster and much more durable as well. Though we don't really have that many durability feats for Toto yet, we can just assume he got more durable considering literally everyone else during the one month time skip mainly focused on increasing their durability, so we can likely say the same for Toto, though we don't know the exact degree that he would have gotten more durable by. However, finally, and this is where his big upgrade comes, which is Toto's Curse Technique that they now have access to. Now, Toto's Curse Technique was always Boogie Woogie, where he needed to clap in order to swap places with things. This was already enough to disorient Hanami originally, albeit with a partner in mind. However, this Toto has access to an even better version of it. Thanks to now attaching the Viber Slap to their body, they are able to swap 50 times a second. Which, as Sakuna himself had directly described, is near impossible to get adjusted to. So if Sakuna, the combat genius, describes this as impossible to get adjusted to, there is no way Hanami, who is already getting disoriented by the normal usage of Boogie Woogie, is getting adjusted to this usage of Boogie Woogie as well. And some of you guys might be wondering that it's only at its peak when it's with several people. Which is true, the more people Toto has with him, the better and better it is. However, Toto also displays the ability to infuse rocks with Curse Energy, which is something he has done in the most recent chapter, to swap Yuji with the rocks. Furthermore, we also know that Toto is capable of swapping Hanami with other things just in general, so long as it has curse energy infused into it. Most of all, and this is probably the most important thing that Toto has access to that I don't think a lot of people talk about, is the fact that Toto is able to decide the position of people he is swapping, not just their body, but also their positions. So with Boogie Woogie, he's not capable of manipulating someone's body, but he is capable of teleporting them and choosing which possession they are facing and not facing. Finally, there is Toto's amazing battle IQ, which is able to near instantly adjust to fighting with this new Yuji Itadori, as well as basically fight with anybody. Toto's described to having an IQ of over 530,000, albeit this is his own description, but Toto is insanely smart, as it was Toto who actually figured out how to counter the cursed buds. In a total of 0.1 of a second, he also has access to Simple Domain, he does also have access to Simple Domain. Toto also has the possibility of hitting a Black Flash in this battle as well. So now we are going to go over the two scenarios that I have planned out for this video, where the first scenario is basically going to be Toto versus Hanami, excluding Hanami's domain expansion, and the second scenario is going to be me talking about if Toto has a way out of Hanami's domain expansion, and how that might actually end up affecting the battle. And unfortunately for Hanami, I have to ultimately give this versus battle to Toto. Now the reason why I think Toto would win is because of the fact that I don't think that Hanami Hanami is just ever hitting Toto. Now, not just do I think that Toto is already faster than Hanami, now Toto has an even faster version of Boogie Woogie than what he had in comparison to before, which allows him to swap 50 times in a single second. More importantly, which is an unfortunate thing for Hanami, all of Hanami's attacks are literally just extra things for Toto to swap with, and Toto more often than not can literally just force Hanami to get hit by their own attacks. For example, if Hanami tries to send the cursed buds at them, well, he can just swap himself with Hanami and force Hanami to get hit by their own cursed buds. Hanami tries to launch out a wood spike at them or wood pellets, Hanami is now swapped and is going to get hit with those attacks too. It is literally just a really bad situation and it's just going to get worse and worse, especially considering Toto can just get more cursed energy infused objects and start throwing those all around the battlefield. Now, yes, Hanami is extremely durable. That is something that I think should be noted, but there is also the issue of even though Hanami is extremely durable, it won't matter if you can't hit your opponent because eventually you are going to go down and you're going to be destroyed because your shield can only last you for so long against something you can't hit that can do steady damage to you. After all, even if we were to assume that Toto hadn't gotten any stronger since Goodwill, which I know is completely wrong, and I think you guys also agree that is completely wrong, considering Toto was literally able to kick Sakuna and make him cough off blood, even though it is a nerf Sakuna, that's still Sakuna nonetheless, he is just going to eventually wear Hanami down. After all, while Hanami is durable, they can only take so many attacks that can steadily damage them, and that's especially assuming that Toto doesn't land a Black Flash at all in this battle. 
or that Toto doesn't choose to go for their weak spot either, which Toto would know about. Like, we're giving Hanami a lot of advantages, and I still think they ultimately end up losing when taking into account their battle IQ as well as their abilities, mainly because Toto is just a really bad matchup for someone like Hanami, because Hanami would just give Toto a lot more to swap with, and we already know that Hanami is not immune to their attacks, mainly because we've already seen how Boogie Woogie interacts with Hanami beforehand. Now, yes, it was with a partner, but at the same time, this is a much stronger and much faster Toto in comparison to before, with a much more superior version of the ability, considering he can literally swap 50 times a second. However, Hanami does have one win con, which is kind of important, which is talking about Hanami's domain expansion. Despite Toto being much stronger, if Hanami can make sure their technique is guaranteed to hit Toto, it's eventually going to wear them down. However, does Toto have a counter to the domain expansion? Now, I'll be honest, in a normal fight, I genuinely don't think that Toto would let Hanami use their domain at all. I think every time Hanami would try to make the hand sign, they'd get interrupted. But let's assume that they end up making the domain eventually after realizing that they aren't going to win the fight. Mainly because Hanami does not start their fights immediately with a domain expansion. Hanami is not going to spawn a domain out of nowhere, while Toto does have a potential way out. And that is assuming that Toto had placed Curse Energy on a rock beforehand, and he swapped places with that rock to get himself out of the domain. Now, of course, we aren't certain if this can happen, but this is something that is very likely that Toto would end up doing just to give himself more things to swap with, especially considering he's fighting against a special grade curse alone. Now, I do think that Hanami's domain would end up winning if Toto gets stuck inside of the domain. However, I just don't see that happening. So basically, most scenarios I see Toto winning unless Hanami just immediately activates his domain or Hanami is able to get Toto in their domain and Toto never places curse energy into a rock or some other object for him to swap with. Other than that, I do think that Toto just wins the fight most times, mainly because of his speed advantage as well as his power advantage and the fact that just Hanami can never hit Toto. However, I want to see what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you all agree with me on this, that Hanami just loses to Toto outright without the domain? Do you think the domain makes no different whatsoever? Or do you think that Hanami should win even without the domain? I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm a dip and peace out. See y'all later. Have a good day.